Right, so worst case scenario, pretty much my Proxmox server has actually gone down. Uh, I can't get any configuration files. I can't access any of my virtual machines. Uh, everything is gone. But the good thing is I have backups, right? So let's, let's get started. So the main thing for me was to get my uh, document site back up. So what I've actually done is I've got one of my other servers, my Alzheim server. I've just put a Cloudflare tunnel on that. Since everything I have is backed up to Duplicati, uh, not just the Alzheim server, but also my Electron server, what I've done is actually I've gone restore and then I've gone uh, direct restore from backup files. And then everything is backed up to a mega.nz, right? So I, I just referenced that and I pointed it to where my Electron cloud, which is my Proxmox server, you know, one of the main VMs in my Proxmox where it was, uh, all the backup files were for it, pointed it to it, pulled down my document server um, files to compose, everything like that, moved that onto my Asm server. So I've got that up and running. So that's okay. That's the main thing I wanted to make sure was up and running. So we've got that just running temporarily on my Asm server. So let's get proxmox and my main server up and running i don't know what's happened it's just dead because this is this here i haven't even closed this tab this is what i was seeing before it, it, everything is down my tunnel is down everything was down uh so let's get uh, a fresh install of proxmox and then once we've got proxmox installed we'll get the drives all of that stuff set up uh all the disks utilized and then what we're going to do from that point on is then we are going to get a fresh vm stood up with ubuntu and then duplicate it installed and we'll pull all the backups um and that should hopefully bring us back to where we were okay let's get the uh installer downloaded like i don't even like my install of proxmox so this is it here like all the vms are gone all the disks are gone. Um, I, I go in via the command line. All the config files are gone. Uh, all the VMs where they should be listed are gone. I don't even know what's happened. Like, yeah. So <laughs> the good thing is that I have backups. So I feel like I could just go through the process of getting... It's just quicker for me to reinstall Proxmox, stand up my VM and just get duplicated to bring everything back down I've, rather than trying to scavenge and get this working again. And I guess that's the pros of having backups, right? So we'll wait for this to finish downloading. Uh, we'll get it rid into a USB and yeah, we'll, we'll boot up the, the server and we'll go from there. Right there, I've got my USB plugged in, so I should see that. I do, we'll select that and flash. So again, I could spend ages trying to get um, figure out what happened to Proxmox and whatnot, but this is a great thing. I just run VMs and all my VMs are backed up. So I, this is putting duplicate to the test, right? Let's get my main VM stood up. Well, we'll get Proxmox stood up. We'll get my main VM stood up. We'll get duplicate installed on it. And then hopefully I can just pull my files back down and then um, get Cloudflare back up, point, you know, Cloudflare to the containers that it needed to be pointed to, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we have Proxmox installing, I'll show you. There we go. So it's installing now, so we'll let it just do its thing. Again, I just want to kind of explain, I can go through the process of trying to figure out what went wrong with the Proxmox, uh, you know, why the config file's gone, uh, stuff like that. The great thing about this, it's a home environment, it's self-hosted, I have backups of everything. It's just faster for me to blow away Proxmox, get a new VM spun up, install duplicate and pull those files down i probably didn't even need to use proxmox if i really wanted to i could have just stood up a server of its own a ubuntu server pulled down the 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 docker files and then away i go i guess this is the perks of one having backups everything being containerized because i know that as soon as i have my um volumes down uh all my compose files and the binaries and stuff sorry not the binaries uh the config files and everything that i had i should just be able to launch it and away I go. I guess we'll put that to the test. Okay, so I'm trying to hit the Proxmox server now. This looks promising, so let's go show details. Uh, we'll just visit it. It's a self signed cert, so that's fine. All right, so we'll have a new login here. All right, there we go. So no valid subscription, that's fine, whatever. Okay, so we have a now a fresh install of Proxmox. Right, so we've got Proxmox all set up. I'm having one uh, trouble with one disk in particular, but that's okay. Um, I'm, I've got another disk dedicated for the Electron Cloud server that I'm going to get set up, uh, set up. So we'll just download the Ubuntu ISO now. So we'll let that download. Then we'll spin up the VM. So once the VMs are stood up, we'll get Duplicati all set up. And then we should just be able to pull all the containers that I need, all the uh, backup information that I need. 
and we should be able to get the server set up. Sorry, I'm looking over here. Servers, uh, can... bones over here. <laughs> it's not normally where I have it. All right, put the green screen back. I feel like we're getting back to a, a sense of a, a a solid position uh, to start actually getting this back up running and whatnot. So let's wait for this ISO to finish and we'll get my VM stood up, get Duplicati set up, get it pointed to where my backups are and pull all of that down and we'll see what happens. This wasn't the video I was planning on making today, but I guess <laughs> it just happens to be it. The image is downloaded now. So what we can do is close that and we'll go create a VM. So just make sure, I, so I've given it four cores, uh, plenty of memory. We're given it the 120 gig of the storage on the SSD. That is fine. So let's hit finish on that and we should get our VM. So let's start this up now, configure it. So open up the console. There we go. So we'll install Ubuntu server. Right, installation is complete. Let's reboot that now. Right, command line. Let's try hit the server. Yes, it's already got our keys, so this should just work. There we go, we're in. Okay, so we have our server stood up. So what we need to do now is um, install Docker first. First step, this is all just from the official uh, Docker um, documentation. So yeah, you can just follow this. So it's just here. So uh, what we need now is grab that one, paste this in, get Docker installed. Yes, please install that. And then we need to get Duplicati. Great, so that's all installed now. So we should have Docker. We do, so let's clear that up. So let's just make a new directory called Docker. And then in here, we'll make another directory called Duplicati. Oh, Duplicate, there we go. Cool. All right, so let's change into Docker now. We've got the Duplicati. So let's change directory into Duplicati. And we'll make uh, a compose file go and on my official documentation i have the duplicated compose file so i'm going to copy that and that should be all i need yep that works for me great so we'll paste that in save oh i need to add my user to the docker group let's quickly do that paste that in add my user to the group and then we will just run this command here so i don't actually have to log out for the changes to be made now we can do docker compose up hyphen D and this will bring up our duplicate server and I should be able to hit it on port. What port was that? Let's go back to our document server. Just search for it, eh? Duplicate. So port 8200. Okay, great. So we'll wait for this to finish running and then we should be able to hit it on the IP address on port 8200. All right, here we go. Great. So we are in duplicate now. So no, this is fine. It's just a single account. We want to restore. Uh, direct restore from backup files. Make this bigger for you. So all my stuff is saved and backed up to my mega drive. And it should be, I misspelled this. It was like backups like that. But let's just double check. So like that. And then Electron uh, Backup. Was that right? Yeah, Electron Backup. Okay, great. Username and our password. And I can test the connection here. Right, so all of my files are encrypted, so I need to put in the password to decrypt them. Hopefully this is the right password. If that's right, it should hit my mega. It should find the backup files that are all in here. So if I actually go in here, I'll show you. These are all the backup files, right? They're all encrypted. Um, you have to have the password to be able to decrypt them. So even if you had the backup, you forgot the password, you're screwed. Um, I'm hoping I remember my password. There we go, see. So uh, it's recreating the database now. Awesome, so it's that worked. So now I should hopefully see everything in here. So the home, there it is, tech docs, Docker, all of my containers, fantastic. Uh, what else have we got? Um, my MK docs and my document uh, server, all backed up, all the, all the uh, pages, uh, the var, lib, Docker, volumes all my volumes great so i want to make sure i have all of those and all of this so let's see what happens here um we'll just hit continue and see what happens so where do you want to restore them to i wonder if this will break things uh like permission wise uh all those volumes those docker volumes uh we'll see we'll see what happens so the original location right let's see what happens 
Right, while that's doing that, I need to uh, restore my Cloudflare Zero Trust tunnel. So you can see here on my Cloudflare, my uh, initial tunnel is down, uh, but I stood up the Alzim tunnel just as a backup, just so I can have my document server up and running. So let's just go into this and restore it. There we go. So the tunnel is healthy now. Great. So none of these, um, like my book stack, my two-factor authentication, all that stuff won't be here at the moment, uh, but it should come right in a second. Um, once, hopefully once I pull all these backups down. So we can see it's now downloading the files and you can see now uh, I'm actually getting all of the containers, well, the, the folders now popping up uh, in the directory. So the authentic is a big one that I need to make sure is uh, here. So I can see that it's pulled all those down. So we'll just continue letting it to do its thing. So everything's backed up now. So uh, a good test is let's try and get my authentic stood up. So let's do docker compose up hyphen d. Oh, let's see how this goes. So it was just auth.tiktok.nz. Oh, let's hope this works. What the? That just worked. Is that cache? Let's log out. Sign in. Oh, wicked. Okay, cool. That is working. Great. So, um, next up is just to get my website back. All right, cool. So now I've just got the MK docs coming down. So if I do, oh, I'll clear that. And LS, you can see that this is all coming down now. So my MK docs is all coming down. So the, the Docker compose just came down. Let's just check that Docker compose file out. Yep. That looks fine. Great. So we'll just wait for the rest of this to finish coming down and we should be able to deploy that and then switch over the tunnel uh, to point to the Electron Cloud rather than my backup server, which is Alzim, that's just running the MK docs at the moment. And it should be pretty seamless. Great, so that's all been restored. So if I do an LS, uh, check the docs, everything looks like it's in there, great. So now let's do a docker compose up hyphen D. And this will spin up our server, well, our document server. All right. That looks good. Okay, so now let's just check that. So let's just do a nano uh, of the Docker Compose because I want to see what port that was on. 8005. All right, let's change this port to 8005. All right, we get the document server. Fantastic. Okay, awesome. So all we need to do now is in Cloudflare, I just need to change. So in here, I actually need to go into Alzim and just get rid of this docs, actually. So under the public host names, I'm just going to remove this. Oh, it's going to bring the server down just for a real quick second. So I need to be quick here. Make sure I have this copied and ready. This, I, all right, let's get delete, go. All right, we've just added it. So now let's just refresh. Uh, so we'll go to the docs. There we go. Look at that. No one would have even noticed. <laughs> oh, okay. So I think that's everything there's a few other little things and bits and pieces but i think we've got the server backed up we've got proxbox reinstalled i've got a disk i need to fix there i don't know what's going on with that disk um but duplicate performed perfectly it backed everything up had all the files just pulled them all down even the volumes um everything just worked Oh, that's a massive relief. This wasn't the video I was planning on making today, um, but hey, these things happen and you got to make sure you have the things in place ready for when they do happen. And thankfully, I had everything backed up. All of my VMs, everything is backed up. Uh, I have other um, devices that I can use. So I was able to quickly pull a backup of my document website, put it onto a server, get that running just in the meantime so people can continue to use that doc the, the documentation while I try to get my server back up and running. And that worked perfectly. So huh, I'm going to go hey, out and have a bit of a walk, I think. <laughs> and then, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't think I have much more to add to that. That's Duplicati. That's how it works. And that's why backups are so important. Please go check out the Duplicati video that I have because this is you know, you might not think, oh, backups, and eh, I'll get around to it. You don't know when your stuff's going to break, right? And you really need to get it up and running. Or in my case, I do, right? There's certain services I need to have up and running. And I think this took me about an hour. I was all up and running within an hour again because I had backups. So that's why that's so important. But thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.